Okay, so we're starting a unit on something called radical expressions, and so we need to start off by defining what a radical is. And a radical is this thing over here, the symbol that probably in the past um, you've heard referred to as the square root symbol. Uh, but we have to be a little bit more general about this. We can't call this the square root symbol because we can actually use this symbol for other things besides just square roots. So whenever you hear us referring to a radical uh, for this entire chapter, what we're really talking about is this symbol over here, which you used to call the square root symbol, but that we're going to use for some other things. So we actually are going to focus on square roots when we use this, but again, later on in, in math, you're going to learn that, that it actually has a lot more uses. So for our purposes, we're going to um, define square roots really quick, and we're going to say, uh, when you take a square root, what you're really asking yourself is what number, when you multiply it by itself, gives you that number that's underneath the radical. So as a simple example, if I were to put a, a 25 in this underneath this radical here, I'm set, and this is a square root now because uh, there's nothing else uh, to indicate otherwise, like um, I could put a 3 here and that doesn't mean square root anymore. So you'll see that later. Okay? But for our purposes, when there's nothing there, we are talking about square roots. And so what we're saying for this problem is what number when I uh, multiply it by itself gives me 25, right? So I'm saying in that case that would obviously be 5, okay? So if you scroll down here, okay, if I asked you to find the square root of this list of numbers here, okay, um, these are the numbers that it's very easy to find their square root. So for example, if I were to say what number when I multiply it by itself gives me 1, well, the answer is 1, right? What number when I multiply it by itself gives me 4, well, the answer is 2. What number, when I multiply it by itself, gives me 9? The answer is 3. And if you notice, as I'm going down this list, okay, what I'm really doing is listing the integers, or the, in this case, just the positive integers, in order. Right? I can keep going. This list actually continues infinitely. I just have, in this case, the first 10. Okay? So this list is going to become extremely important. You're going to be using this a lot. So it's one you want to have uh, access to. So I would suggest, if you're writing this down, putting uh, this list of numbers okay, in a place where you can find it, because you're going to actually be searching for these numbers. So again, this is special because if I do 2 squared, I get 4. 3 squared, I get 9. 4 squared, I get 16. So if you're ever trying to remember that list and you don't have access, you can just go down the list of integers, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. In this case, I stopped at 10 squared, but we could keep going. Okay? So this is going to be the purpose of our, our unit today, is to work with this uh, these numbers here and, and try to use this to our advantage. Okay, So we're going to start off by simplifying radical expressions. So uh, the idea of simplifying radical expressions is very similar to how you simplified fractions. Right? If I gave you a fraction like, for example, 3 over 12, we look at this and say, wait a second, I can actually simplify this uh, because this has a factor of 3 and this has a factor of 3. And I can turn it into something that looks uh, a little bit simpler, a little bit smaller numbers, and that's what we like. We like to work with smaller numbers. Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to take our square root expression, our radical expression, and we're going to break it up into factors of this number uh, underneath, which we call a radicand. Okay, so for this first example, I'm looking for factors of 27. I want one of those two factors that I choose to be a number that's on this list. Okay, I'm going to look for factors of 27 that could be 4, it could be 9, it could be 16. Uh, I don't want to just arbitrarily break it up into two numbers. I want to pick it so one of these numbers is on is is uh, in the list. Okay, so I'm going to look at 27 and say, well, if I look at the factors of 27, it looks like it's just 27 times one, and one is on the list. Okay, and it's also nine times three, and nine is on the list. So I'm going to choose actually nine because I know the square root of nine. So if you watch what I do now, I'm going to say this turns into the square root of nine, and the square root of three. Right. The reason I chose to do this was because I can at least simplify part of this. I know what the square root of 9 is. The square root of 9 is 3. Right? I don't know the square root of 3 off the top of my head, so I'm going to leave that one alone. And I'm going to say this is now a simplified expression. Right? It's got smaller numbers than the 27, and I was able to simplify part of it, just kind of like I did up here. Right? I simplified part of, of uh, 3 twelfths. Okay? So 24, here's another example. Uh, if I were to think of factors of 24 and I went down the list, I'd say 1 and 24, okay? 2 times 12, 3 times 8, okay? 4 times 6, right? and it looks like I'm out. Those are all the factors of 24. So if I look at these numbers and say, can I square root any of these in my head? Well, square root of 1, sure, I can do that, so that's perfect square. Okay? That's always going to be there, though. Right, 2 and 12. I can't square root 2 in my head. I can't square root 12 in my head. I can't square root 3 or 8 in my head. But wait a second, I got this one right here. 
I can square root 4. Okay, So I'm going to break this up into 4 times 6 because I can square root 4. I'm going to say this is the same as the square root of 4 and the square root of 6. And I did that because I know what the square root of 4 is, so I'm going to simplify just this part 2 times the square root of 6. Okay. And here's a nice thing about this. If you want to check to see if you did this correctly, if you were to go to a calculator, okay, let me bring my calculator in, okay, and I did the square root of 24 on the calculator, it's going to give me the decimal uh, equivalent of the square root of 24. If I type in the simplified version, it should be the same thing. 2 times the square root of 6, okay, and it's going to tell me the same exact number. Right? So again, just like fractions, um, 3 twelfths and 1 fourth mean, both mean 0 0.25 if I put them in decimal form. And that's the same thing with radicals. We're just writing them in a simpler way. Okay? So here's, uh, we'll just do one more, the square root of 8. All right, the square root of 8, I would say, breaks down into uh, 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. And that's it. And here's my, my uh, biggest perfect square again. It looks like I know the square root of 4. So I'm going to break this up into the square root of 4 and the square root of 2. And I did that because I know what the square root of 4 is. It's 2 square root of 2. And I'd say this is the simplified version. Okay? And you can try it with the square root of 116. It's a slightly larger number, so it has some more factors. Uh, and, and you can try that out on your own. All right, so here's just a few more examples of simplifying radical expressions. And these uh, four examples here uh, have a number sitting outside of them. You can say in, see in each of these spots I have a 3 and a negative 2. And so what's really happening here is we're multiplying. This is saying 3 times the square root of 12. So we just have to, uh, to see how we deal with these numbers sitting outside that are being multiplied by an expression when we go through the simplifying process. right? So when we're looking at 12, I would look at this and say, OK, 12, again, when I break it down, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. We're really not going to worry about 1 as a perfect square. Right? It is a perfect square, but it's really not going to change the value at all because I'd still end up with a 12. So I'm just going to worry about this 4. Again, I'm going to say this breaks down into the square root of 4 and the square root of 3. And this 3 is just going to follow the expression down. Uh, and now when I simplify, I know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 3, I don't know off the top of my head. Or we can find, figure out what it is, but it would be a decimal. So now that I have the square root of 4 simplified, this is just going to turn into 3 times 2. And I'm going to say this simplifies into 6, which comes from 3 times 2, and the square root of 3. Right? So whenever you get those numbers out front, they're just going to be multiplied with the value that comes out of your perfect square. So here's another example. Again, if I were to go through the list of 40, this breaks down into the square root of 4 and the square root of 10, and the negative 2 is outside. I know what the square root of 4 is. Again, it's 2. Okay, so I can say this turns into negative 4 times the square root of 10. Okay? The square root of 28 breaks down into the square root of 4 and the square root of 7, with a 6 outside. So I can say 6 times 2, which comes from this, would turn into 12 square root of 7. Okay. And then the last one um, I have on here, just because I, I don't want you to remember what, or which, I don't want you to forget what you already know. Uh, if you have something like the square root of 36, don't try to break this down. The square root of 36 you could do right now, uh, unlike the square root of 40 or the square root of 12 or the square root of 28. Right? If I say what's the square root of 12, you'd have to go to your calculator or you'd have to estimate. But if I say what's the square root of 36, you know what the square root of 36 is. This is really just 100. The square root of 36 is 6. So I would say this is equal to 600. Okay? Don't, you could break this down, but you don't have to. You know what it is. Just simplify it like you know.